Well, folks, that was a track off what is a fantastic album, and it is a real pleasure to be joined on the phone by the gentleman behind the said album, Mr. Frank Domino. Welcome to Rock Poses Roulette. Great to be here, Dan. Well, it's great to have a chat um, by an album that's been out for a while now, and maybe if people have missed it, they need to maybe uh, hunt it down and re-engage with it. Yeah, you know... Um... I, I, I've been doing some uh, interviews and talking to some people and stuff, and it's, you know, the music business is a whole different deal these mm. days, you know. So it's very difficult to get it out there. Uh, there are no really, there's no record stores anymore, and um, and terrestrial radio plays a lot of, uh, well, you know, it's like a lot of the same stuff, you know, and, and a lot of it is pop or uh, or other stuff, but... It's very difficult to get this uh, this kind of thing on on radio and uh, get it out there. So I appreciate any any way of getting it out there to people to get it to let them to get them to listen to it. Well, as I always say about a lot of radio stations, when they say um, you know they've uh, increased their playlist, what you mean is you bought another compilation album. Yeah, yeah, you know, you would think uh, if there was like only six or seven bands in the world, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, then, you know, and, and sorry, go ahead. So, yeah, there's so much good talent out there. You know, I mean, there is a lot of nonsense out there, but there is a lot of good stuff out there, and you just have to kind of search for it. And and unfortunately, uh, a lot of those radio stations don't help you. Uh, you got to kind of rely on some internet stuff and uh, and and stuff like that to to, uh, to find some really good good stuff. Well, I mean, I get sent an awful lot of um, of stuff through for um, for airplay and review, etc. And yet, I still miss stuff, and I think, how the hell did I miss that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Well, we could yeah. spend several hours, obviously, talking about uh, the band that uh, you are best known for, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about, obviously, this album. And the first question I'm going to actually ask you is, uh, what took you so long to uh, to settle down and release a solo album? Well, I, I think what, what what happened was, uh, you know, uh, speaking to uh, a friend of mine, a uh, close friend of mine, Ken Chin um we're out to uh, to dinner, and and he had said to me, "Why don't you do a solo album?" And and my explanation at that time was, I was so used to playing in bands and uh, and just singing, and and the band thing never came around to getting any deals with any bands and stuff. But mm. I was so used to that that I, I wasn't, I, I never thought of doing a solo album. And um, after after more talks with Ken, I, I finally said, you know, maybe it might be, it might free me up a little bit more writing-wise uh, to do a solo album. Instead of writing for a band, uh, the strengths of the band and what the the band wants to convey, that the uh, the whole illusion, um, and maybe, maybe I approach it a different way and just sit down and write some good songs and, and and, and write without those constrictions. So that's what I decided to do. Uh, and it just it just took a while to get around to that kind of thought process, I think. Well, obviously, uh, the, the the huge fan base uh, is Angel fans. Were you at all um, worried at how they were going to accept this album because maybe they were uh, anticipating certain directions? Uh, a little bit, but uh, I just kind of kept that in the back of my mind, you know, and I thought... I, I can't approach it that way. I, without the other four guys, it's never ever going to sound like Angel. Of course. So there's no reason for me to 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 constrict myself again uh, into thinking that I have to kind of write geared towards that kind of uh, audience. So I just look, kind of looked at it and try to open up everything and uh, just just move forward and write write good songs. Obviously, being a gentleman, that is. Uh been in the music business a long time, knows a lot of people. Obviously, when it comes to recording this album, you open up the address book, and where most albums say, you know, a few guest uh, appearances, <laughs> my God, you've got a few guest appearances. <laughs> I know, you know, it's, it's very weird, but, you know, what happened, all that stuff kind of happened organically, really. It, uh, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't think about having guest uh, guitar players on the album, because, uh, I felt I was covered. I had Paul Crook, I had Oz Fox, and I had uh, my friend uh, Jeff Lebansky. All the guitars were covered, so I, I never thought about asking other people to, to play on the album. It just kind of happened that way. Um, of course, uh, Never Again was uh, when Oz and I wrote that. Oz uh, felt, you know, we were, we were writing more towards uh, 
uh, uh, an angel kind of song. And he was the one that asked me, he said, wouldn't it be great if we had Punky play a solo on this? And I said, I don't think that would be a problem. You know, so I called Punky and, and um, asked him if he'd like to play on the album. And he said, of course, I'd, I, I'd love to. So I said, I think we have a track. So I sent him uh, the track and he uh, put a solo on it and sent it back. And and each each song kind of happened that way. Um, with Tonight's the Night, uh, Eddie... Eddie Ajeda was at the NAMM convention and he was coming into Vegas and he called uh, Paul and, and myself. We were at the studio and he said, hey, you know, what's going on? What's happening on there? I'm coming into Vegas. And Paul said, well, we're recording, you know, uh, Frank and I are doing uh, Frank's solo album. Why don't you come down to the studio? So he came down, listened to the stuff. And I asked him, I said, well, would you like to play on a track? And he said, I'd love to. So, <laughs> So I sent him home with a track, and he came down the next day and put a solo on it. And, and, and kind of everything kind of happened that way. Uh, with Pat Thrall, uh, Pat was Pat uh, had been involved with with the uh, with and from the beginning uh, in making uh, helping us put together the uh, the solo album. Um, and we always used uh, Pat for uh, fresh ears if we needed right. uh, someone to listen to some. We were getting too close to stuff, so. Uh, so Pat, you know, uh, asked me, he said, uh, you know, why don't you send me a track? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to play on the album. So uh, so when it came to uh, finding a track that uh, we thought suited uh, Pat, uh, we sent him a track and and he sat in on it. So uh, he, all that stuff kind of just happened that way. You know, it wasn't planned, but it but it was nice to, nice for it to happen the way it did. Well, it's nice. I must uh, mention one thing, the fact that obviously Punky uh, brought his uh, album Fallen Angel out this year, which is, uh, again, another phenomenal album. And you you guys have yeah. got to get on a roll here and start... Uh, uh, we want to see some more solo albums from you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, you know, we do what we do, I guess. You know, we'll see what happens. You know, we deal with the music industry that's in front of us. I mean, I'm I'm always singing. I'm I'm always trying to put something together. So I, I'm always out here singing and doing stuff. So we'll see what happens. I mean, you know, I, 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 it would be great for everyone to do their own uh, own album. I, I know Barry and I are always writing together. You know, he was just here when we did the awards thing. He he stayed with me and we wrote some stuff together. So, you know, maybe that stuff will surface somewhere. Uh, you know, who knows? But, but we're always active. We're always doing something. Are you someone who um, has to sit in a sort of specific room, either a studio or what have you, uh, to write? Or are you someone who has a notebook in his pocket and just gets ideas from everywhere? It, it, it all depends, I guess, on, my, uh, on, on, on my, my, my brain at the time. You know, I, right. I, do, have, I do have a music room where, where I, I teach and I have my piano and my recording stuff and my guitar. So I do come in here to, to, you know, to, to, to always... Uh, I try and do it daily, once a day, to come in here and do some stuff. But I, I do carry around something that you know uh, to record things if, if something pops up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I go both ways. Either way will, will works for me. Whatever my my mind is uh, is is working in, what direction it's working in at the time. When I revisited this album um, today before doing the interview, it refreshed my mind, and it was, it was interesting that. Uh, so the standout tracks which grabbed me the first time I ever listened to the album have changed sort of two or three times listening. Um, but one track's always um, stayed in my mind as being a favourite, and that's the last track on the album, which, of course, is Stones by the River, which is, for me, has got that just enough little snippet of sort of gospel and blues thrown into it. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when we first started that, that track, uh, Oz had had most of that track together and uh, I came in on the tail end of it and kind of reworked with some stuff with him. And um, when we went into the studio uh, and we started putting the vocal on, um, Paul had said to me, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm in a church, <laughs> you know, I see with the vocal and everything that's going on, I feel like I'm in a church somewhere. So I said, well, you know, maybe we should like approach it that way. You know, uh, let's put some like gospel singers on it and stuff like that. So, so that was the approach as we went into it, you know, uh, from putting that lead vocal on, uh, we decided to gear it more towards that way. And uh, I think it really, uh, it really opened up the track. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is a fantastic track. It's OK. It is slightly different to the other two on the album. But I think it's, it's great because it just finishes off the album with almost a, a fresh taste of the palette. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and the thing is, when when uh, we put all those vocals on and everything, and we when we sent the uh, the track to Pat to put the solo on, <laughs> uh, he put the solo on and sent it, sent the track back to Paul, and Paul called me up. He said, uh, "You got to hear this." I said, "What?" He said, "Pat just sent me back the uh, the solo." Uh, and I came down to the studio. We threw it on, and I said, "Oh my God!" I said, "You know, with this, the way the track is going, we got to kind of, we got to kind of end the uh, the uh, CD of the album with this with this track because you don't really want to hear anything else after that, you know." <laughs> that is a, that's a very good way of putting it, indeed. Yeah, you know that solo comes in, and it's like the doors open, you know, to the church. They open, and yeah. it's just like fresh air comes in, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just a uh, it's it's a great uh, it's a great invitation. There's two other tracks on the album that uh, I always come back to. Um, I, I seem to, and I've brought this up in interviews before. I seem to be uh, have a habit now of picking tracks that either are not singles or no one else has ever picked. So, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see if I'm still going to strike lucky on this one. But I mean, the, the, the two probably my two other favourite tracks on the album are the Quest and Tears Will Fall. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Tears Will Fall, uh, I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, with the lyrics on that one. I, I just wanted to get that one right. Mm. Um, I felt it needed something, some kind of different kind of uh, direction on it uh, because it was, um, it just was, uh, it, it was kind of like a uh, a heavy, um, a heavy kind of song yeah. and not, and not heavy in, you know, metal heavy, but it was just a heavy song. And I, th I, I thought that, that the, the melody and the lyrics kind of had to go along with with the uh, with the chords that we had uh, written for that song. So yeah, I, I went back and forth with a lot of different uh, different things until I was finally satisfied with it. But I was really happy with the outcome. And then again, uh, um, I had said to Paul, uh, "We need. A, I, I think we need a, a slide guitar on this." And um, Ken, who's the executive producer on the album, is really good friends with Ricky. And I knew Ricky from the old Blackfoot days because we had done some shows together with Angel. Right. And he said, let's call Ricky and, and ask him if, he'll, uh, if he has time to do it. So we got in touch with Ricky and uh, he said, you know, gee, I'm really, I'm really backed up with Linda Skinner and the, and the Blackfoot thing. He said, but send it over to me. I'll see if I can uh, squeeze it in, you know. Uh, so we sent it over to him and I didn't know if it was going to be done in time. And just as we were getting near the end, uh, he sent it back. I, we were ready to have... Paul put it on, uh, put a, a solo on there, and uh, Ricky had sent it back. And again, a, another uh, a great, great solo. It just added to that uh, that song, which really needed something. Everything that we added to that song really kind of worked for me. So I was really happy with that. Well, Ricky certainly is a very busy man, and it's uh, I, again, I'm going to put a shout out to that uh, that latest Blackfoot album because that is. Uh, He's, yeah, he's put yeah. such a refreshing feel. I can't remember who the who the guy is he's got singing now, but uh, that really is a refreshing album. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, you're right. Well, Frank is a great talent. He's a great. He's a great writer. Well, I say it's just a, a, a multitude of talent. Uh, with, with of course yourself at the at the head of the table, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Once again, I've got to say, uh, Old Habits Die Hard is a fantastic album. If you guys haven't heard it and you just want what I call just decent, honest, hard rock. No fluff, no added uh, extras or anything. Just a, a good, honest album, if that's, if that's a fair enough comment to make. That's a perfect way to put it. I, I, I like that way. I like that definition. Well, Frank, it's been an absolute pleasure and a joy speaking to you. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to have a chat. And... Uh, Best wishes for the future, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and uh, hope that you manage to find time to, to squeeze in at least one more solo album out in the future. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Thanks so much for having me, Dan. No problem at all. Thanks now.